All right, everybody, welcome back to Friends for Life's Midweek Mini. We got some kind of really bad news today yeah. about... <laughs> this was crazy, uh, man. <laughs> shock therapy, the FDA, what the heck is going on? Absolutely strange times. I mean, you hear shock therapy, you think of like the 70s and Easy. the 60s. Yeah. Like this is like a, something like I didn't think this was still going on, but apparently there's still places that are using this for people with disabilities, which is not even borderline torture. That's like like it, it's over. I don't even use that kind of stuff on my animal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like shock I've, collars. And, I've threatened it with to my kids, but <laughs> you know, like come on. Yeah. So this is odd because it's 2021. We've we've overcome a lot of hurdles mm -hmm. in in the disabilities field, uh, but to, to have to th even read an article about something like this. So basically, the FDA put a ban on on these shock devices for people with disabilities, highly aggressive, you know, people that have a lot of behavioral issues, mm -hmm. um, and they were sued basically because. People wanted to still use them, but it's only like one facility, and um, it, it, it's really scary. Like, like the the parents are fighting for this, and the facilities fighting for this to get overturned so they can continue using the shock devices. And they're saying it's the only way that families can visit the like their their, their loved sons or loved ones or daughters or anyone without having aggressive outbreaks, but. You're literally shocking them. Like, that causes damage to your yeah, brain, your I guess, body. I guess that's my biggest question. I need to be able to see what is going on. Like, what what type of aggression is happening? What mm -hmm. type of treatment is actually being found w to work? Like, I, like what's the voltage that they're yeah. using? You know, I, I mean, because in, in some aspect, and I guess I'm, 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 I'm borderline uh, uh, agreeing and disagreeing right now, but there are, there have been things that have turned out oddly to help some people. So I want to, I, I mean, I think the question, like we need to look through the, the court docs or yeah. the court papers. Well, it's saying right here in the article, it's saying the FDA finalized the regulation as it cited as an unreasonable and substantial risk of injury and illness from the devices uh, the psychological, physical risks, including burns, tissue damage, worsening, underlying symptoms, depression, anxiety, and PTSD, all sound like pretty bad outcomes. Comes, yeah. <laughs> and this is the kind of stuff that that you see, and you're like, people forget that if someone has a disability, they're still a human being. Yeah, it's ridiculous that like these things are still still ongoing, and you know, like every time you feel like you take a huge step forward, something like this pops up, and yeah. you're like, what? is going on what world are we living in right and, now and even asking you know what is the the end game here like yeah. again I, like i said i've i've joked around with my kids telling them that i'll get them a shot collar or something but i never followed through with yeah. it <laughs> and like i i've never seen um it, it reminds me of willowbrook Mm -hmm. I'm sure in the Willowbrook times, there were a lot of these treatments going oh, yeah. on. And I have never seen a, a case in which I'm like, hey, this person's quote unquote healed. You know, he, they're ready to join society as as a whole again. Like, where is I need to see what is the scientific proof that any of this stuff is working? Like, that's that's the the biggest question. Well, me. I mean. It went from, you know, basically locking people with disabilities up to lobotomizing them yeah, for right? like they thought like oh we'll just go up through their eye canal and mm -hmm. split their brain you take know? a little bit of that muscle meat yeah. of their brain. <laughs> so it's I mean at the time they thought these things were great advances, but they're really just torture. I mean, yeah. anytime you mess with the human brain, it's not a good. It's not at all. I was just watching a um, a little segment about this boxer who got punched in the back of the head. Mm. Um, and, you know, it happened several times throughout the fight, but he ended up having a brain hemorrhage. Yep. And they did um, surgery, and now he's paralyzed. Um, you know, the family still has hope that he'll get better, but he's like 24 years old. Mm -hmm. And, 
I mean, completely immobilized. Yep. He, everything a part of, uh, about his life now is done by his mom and father. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it, it's sad. And to think that people, I mean, I'm sure you probably, there was an individual at some point probably coming into a facility. They got lobotomized or had some kind of uh, surgery done to them that made them worse than what could have been. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, a potential helping experience by just trying to figure out, you know, the 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 pros and cons of their quote unquote behavior or disability or well, I was, difference. I was gonna say if any every time I had I acted out or or gotten you know acted <laughs> the extra strange and I got shocked, man, I'd be in I would be in a wheelchair because right. I would I, you know that's I don't know I. I have a hard time with stuff like this, especially when people are advocating for it. And mm -hmm. I don't have the, the kid in the facility or the family yeah. member in the facility. But, I mean, would you want your kid shocked or your uncle or your – I mean, I would never want that ever. Well, to, to play devil's advocate, I mean, I, I can see some things – being possibilities let's say if this person has uh suicidal tendencies and they don't have um anybody there to help guide them and there was a drawer that had knives in it um and there was something to shock if they went and touched it but again th this is me trying to play devil's advocate think things through to a whole new level because we already have ways of putting precautions in place mm -hmm. for that you know there are restrictions and this is why the human rights committee exists so we can talk about the the the, the restrictions that some people who are in more danger than others may have to go through so again shock is just i'm shocked <laughs> I mean, that's a it's a brutal thing. Have you ever been shocked? It's terrible. Hey, man, I, I used to hate those little, those pins yeah. that they used to get yeah. back in the day. Man, it made my thumb feel like it was going to fall off. <laughs> but, I mean, to, to wrap it up here, it's basically saying, you know, the, the ending quote of the article saying, the next step is clear. Uh, the group said in a similar statement, the FDA must completely ban the GED and similar devices, which are the shock devices. Uh, and they call on the FDA to immediately pursue a new complete ban. Uh, and we'll continue to advocate fiercely until this torture is finally ended. Um, you know, it's also strange to me that the FDA is involved, but wait, yeah. I, mean, I don't know what that has to do. You know, I, I guess I, it's drug. I, I think we need to talk to um, Dr. Craig Eskew today. Yeah, uh, that would be because, a good one to ask. Yeah, I think he 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 will probably have some knowledge on this. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe I'll, re I'll reach out to him and ask him about that. But, um, you know, thank you guys for listening or watching to this Friends for Life Midweek Mini. As always, if you could, go down below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you're listening on a podcasting platform, leave us a rating or review on iTunes. We'd greatly appreciate, appreciate that. Man, I just cannot talk. Why did you hire me to talk? Right. Uh, um, and then, you know, we got our other shows. We have the Friends for Life podcast. We have our midweek mini, which you're listening to right now. We've got Medical Mondays and our newest show, Nursing in No Time. And Friends for Life is currently hiring DSPs and a supervisor. Tony, why don't you tell us a little more about where we can learn more about yes, hiring and yes, working yes, here yes, with yes, us? Yes, yes. If you go to friendsforliferc.com, there's all the information there. You can see what we are about, what we do, how we do it, in a sense. Um, but then, you know, come out and talk to us. You don't have to go through the same interview process all the time. We really want people who are in this long term and know what they're doing. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, Hey, we have tons of things um, to help teach you. We are in um, a bunch of training, different episodes for um, Open Future Learning. Our Open Future Learning partnership is a great one, and I think it's really teaching a lot of people um, some of the effects of having a developmental difference and being a DSP in this world it, that they, they mash, they go together, they come together. Um, so, yeah, come on. All right. Yeah. So thanks for everybody for watching and listening. We'll see you next week.